Stoichiometry Lesson 5.11, Balancing Equations Using the Algebraic Method. Here are some equations to balance. Pause the video here and balance these yourself and then return to the video to check your answers. Here are the answers. In our last lesson, we balanced equations by taking an atom inventory. You changed coefficients in order to obtain the same number of atoms of each element on the reactant side as on the product side. For some equations, this process may be difficult. Let's try balancing this equation using another method called the algebraic method. This method uses the law of conservation of matter and simple algebra. The first thing we need to do is to assign variables to the unknown coefficients. In this case, we'll use a, b, c, and d. Next, we write an algebraic expression for each element in this reaction. When the equation is balanced, the number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms will be the same on both sides. Using this information, we can now write these algebraic expressions. Let's start with carbon. Notice that there are two carbons in C2H6. That means that for every molecule of C2H6, there are two atoms of carbon. Or for every A of C2H6, there are two A carbon atoms. In other words, if there's one C2H6, there are two carbon atoms. If there are two C2H6s, then there are four carbon atoms. For every A of C2H6, there are two A carbon atoms. Carbon also appears in this equation on the product side in carbon dioxide. Notice that there's only one carbon in carbon dioxide. This means that for each molecule of carbon dioxide, there's only one atom of carbon. If C were equal to one, then I'd have one carbon. If C were equal to two, I'd have two carbons and so on. For every C of carbon dioxide, C being the variable C, there are one C carbon atoms. Since the law of conservation of matter says that the same number of atoms must be the same on each side of the equation, meaning that the number of carbon atoms must be the same on the reactant side as the product side, we know that 2A is equal to C. Looking at hydrogen, we notice there are six hydrogens in C2H6. This means that for each molecule of C2H6, there are six atoms of hydrogen. Or for every A of C2H6, there are six A hydrogen atoms. If the coefficient were one, we'd have six hydrogen atoms. If the coefficient were two, we would have six times two or 12 hydrogen atoms and so forth. Hydrogen also appears in this equation on the product side in H2O. There are two hydrogens in H2O. This means that for each molecule of H2O, there are two atoms of hydrogen. Or for every D, coefficient D of H2O, there are two D hydrogen atoms. If the coefficient D were one, then we'd have only two times one or two hydrogen atoms. If the coefficient D were two, we'd actually have four hydrogen atoms and so on. Since the law of conservation of matter says that the same number of atoms must be on each side of the equation, meaning that the number of hydrogen atoms must be the same on the reactant side as the product side, we know that 6A equals 2D. Oxygen. There are two oxygens in O2. This means that for each molecule of O2, there are two atoms of oxygen. Or for every B of oxygen, there are two B oxygen atoms. In other words, if the coefficient B were one, we'd have two oxygen atoms. If it were two, we'd have two times two or four oxygen atoms and so on. 
Oxygen also appears in this equation on the product side in both compounds, carbon dioxide and water. There are two oxygens in carbon dioxide. This means that for each molecule of carbon dioxide, there are two atoms of oxygen. Or for every C of carbon dioxide, there are two C oxygen atoms. Oxygen also appears in H2O. There is one oxygen in H2O. This means that for each molecule of H2O, there is one atom of oxygen. Or for every D of H2O, for every coefficient D, there are 1D oxygen atoms. If the coefficient of D were 1, there would be one oxygen atom. If the coefficient of D were 2, there would be 1 times 2 or 2 oxygen atoms. Since the law of conservation of matter says that the same number of atoms must be on each side of the equation, meaning that the number of oxygen atoms must be the same on the reactant side as the product side, 2B is equal to 2C plus D. Now these are our algebraic expressions. 2A equals C, 6A equals 2D, and 2B equals 2C plus D. Rewriting all of our equations, we have 2A equals C, 6A equals 2D, and 2B equals 2C plus D. The quickest way to solve these is to let A equals 1, then solve for the remaining variables. So we'll let A equals 1. Plugging that into the first equation, 2A equals C, 2 times 1 equals C, or C equals 2. We also know that 6A equals 2D. When we substitute the number 1 for A, we figure out that 6 equals 2D, or D equals 3. Now we're left with the equation 2B equals 2C plus D. We already know what C and D are, so we're just going to plug those in. 2B is equal to 2 times C, which is 2, plus D, which is 3. Or 2B equals 4 plus 3, or 2B equals 7. To solve for B, we divide both sides by 2, and B equals 7 halves, or 3.5. However, we need to make sure that all coefficients are whole numbers. B cannot be a fraction or a decimal. So we multiply all the coefficients by 2 to remove the fraction from B. In this way, A becomes 2, B becomes 7, C becomes 4, and D equals 3 times 2, which is 6. So the balanced equation is 2 C2H6 plus B times O2, which is 7, yields C CO2, which is 4 CO2, plus D H2O, which is 6 H2O. Let's try another example. Firstly, let's add variables to the unknown coefficients, A, B, C, and D. Then we write algebraic expressions for each element in this reaction. Next, we write an algebraic expression for each element in this reaction. Starting with carbon, we see that we have two carbons in C2H5OH, so that would be 2A, and we have one carbon in carbon dioxide. So we have 2A equals C. With regards to hydrogen, we actually have six hydrogens in C2H5OH. Notice that the H's are listed in two different places in that compound. So that would be 6A. And then we have two hydrogens in water. So 6A equals 2D. And with regards to oxygen, notice that we have one oxygen in A, two oxygens in B, 
two oxygens in C and one oxygen in, o, in D. So our equation for oxygen is A plus 2B equals 2C plus D. Rewriting all of our equations, we have 2A equals C, 6A equals 2D, and A plus 2B equals 2C plus D. To solve, we first let A equal 1. When a equals 1, we plug that into our first equation, 2a equals c. We know that 2 times a, or 2 times 1, equals c. In other words, c equals 2. Since a is 1, we can now plug that into 6a equals 2d to solve for d. 6 times 1 equals 2d, or 6 equals 2d. To solve for d, we divide both sides by 2, and d becomes 3. Lastly, we'll use our known variables a, c, and d to solve for the last variable, b. a plus 2b equals 2c plus d. a is equal to 1 plus 2b equals 2c, where c is 2, so 2 times 2, plus d, which is 3. 1 plus 2b equals 2 times 2 plus 3 or 1 plus 2b equals 4 plus 3, or 1 plus 2b equals 7. To isolate b, we'll subtract 1 from both sides, and we get 2b equals 6. To solve for b, we'll divide both sides by 2, and we get b equals 3. We have now solved all our algebraic equations. As our coefficients are already whole numbers, we'll just plug them in. a equals 1, b equals 3, c equals 2, and d equals 3. The equation is now balanced. This concludes Lesson 5.11 on balancing equations using the algebraic method. Please proceed to Quiz 5.11 before continuing on to the next lesson.